In question one, we want to convert seven pi or six radians into degrees. And to do this, we're gonna multiply by a conversion factor. We want degrees in the numerator and radians in the denominator. This way, the radians will cancel and degrees will be left over. Now, there is 180 degrees for every pi radians. And this way, this fraction is equal to one so it won't change the value, it'll switch the units. I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. First, I'm going to note that well, we're canceling the radians, and what is left over is degrees. I'll now multiply these two fractions together. Let's put that next. So that's 7 pi over 6. That's being multiplied to 180 over pi, and we already canceled the units of radians and degrees is what is left over. Now ignoring the unit and focusing on just the numbers, I see I can cancel the pi's, so this cancels with that, with one left over, and 6 goes into itself once, and it goes into 18 a total of 30 times. So my answer is, okay, the denominators are gone, it's just 7 times 30, so 7 is being multiplied to 30, and what is left over is degrees, and that's actually 210, and I'll put degrees like this, and that is the final answer. All right, now for question two, we want to use reference angles to find the exact values of, well, in part A, sine of 5 pi over 6. So the way this works if you're using a reference angle is, I'll draw a unit circle as a guide. Okay, where is 5 pi over 6? Well, half a rotation is pi, and that's the same thing as 6 pi over 6. So if you go backwards by pi over 6, that'll be 5 pi over 6, because we're taking 1 away. So here is 5 pi over 6. And the reference angle is this angle here. It's the acute angle made by the terminal side of this angle, and the x-axis, and this angle here is pi over 6. So that's my reference angle. The reference angle is useful because sine of 5 pi over 6, it's either equal to sine of pi over 6, or it is the negative of sine of pi over 6. Here, they're equal sine of 5 power 6 is equal to sine of pi over 6. And the reason is, here, in the second quadrant, sine is the y value of this point, and this is a positive y value. So now we just need to know, well, what is sine of pi over 6? And this is equal to 1 half. So that is the answer for part A. What about part B? Cosine of negative 3 pi over 4. So step one is, first, locate where negative 3 pi over 4 is on a unit circle. Someone's drawing this as a guide. Okay, the negative means we're not rotating counterclockwise, but we're going in this direction. We're going clockwise. Okay, so if you're counting by pi over 4, so this is 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, this will be negative 3 pi over 4. That's where this angle is. It's in the third quadrant. Okay, well, what's the reference angle? It's the angle created by the terminal side of this angle and the x-axis that's acute, and so that's this angle here. This is pi over 4. So in this example, the reference angle is pi over 4. So for this problem, Cosine of negative 3 pi over 4 is either equal to cosine of pi over 4 or is equal to the negative of it. And we just have to decide which it is. Cosine is the x value at this angle. And the x values over here are negative. Therefore, cosine of negative 3 pi over 4 is equal to the negative of cosine of pi over 4. And cosine of pi over 4 has an exact value of the square root of 2 over 2. And that is the exact answer for part B. 
for sine of 5 pi over 3, okay, again, step one is, where is the angle 5 pi over 3? Okay, let's see. If you count by pi over 3, okay, so 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So it's like right about there. Another way to think about this is, if you do one full rotation, that's two pi radians. And two pi radians is equal to six pi over three. If you multiply the top and bottom by three, you get six pi over three. Well, if you go backwards pi over three, that six drops down to a five and you're at five pi over three. So five pi over three is in the fourth quadrant. Second question is, well, what is the reference angle? And that's going to be this angle here. That angle is pi over 3. So the reference angle is pi over 3. So the question is, if you want to figure out sine of 5 pi over 3, it is either equal to sine of pi over 3, or it is the negative of that value. Sine is the y value of this point. This is a negative y value. Therefore, I'm going to include this negative. Now, there is an exact value for sine at pi over 3, and that is the square root of 3 over 2, and that is the answer for part C. Okay, last one here. Tangent of, well, now we're in degrees, but 180 degrees. And that is the same thing as pi radians. So that is a half rotation. So here is 180 degrees, also pi radians. Since this angle falls on one of the axes, I'm not going to use a reference angle for it. Instead, we're going to use the definition of sine and cosine to determine what tangent of 180 degrees is. So by definition, tangent is sine divided by cosine. And here that would be sine of the same angle, 180 degrees, 180 degrees. So do we know sine and cosine here at 180 degrees? Because this is a unit circle that is a circle with radius 1, the coordinates of this point, the x value is negative 1, and the y value is 0. Sine, by definition, is the y value, so this is 0. And cosine, by definition, is the x value. So you can just plug in 0 for sine of 180 degrees and negative 1 for cosine of 180 degrees. And this simplifies to 0 because 0 divided by 1 is 0. And that is it for this problem. For the last question, we're going to let cosine of theta equal 7 over 25. And we're told theta is in the fourth quadrant. We want to find the exact values of the five remaining trig functions. I'm going to make a note to myself. So off to the side here. We are told that the angle theta, whatever it is, is in the fourth quadrant. So it rotates like this, and this is the location of the angle. It's important to note this because in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent, some are positive and some are negative. I know that sine is negative, cosine is positive, and tangent is negative. The reasons are, for any point that lies in the fourth quadrant, the y value is sine, that's negative. The x value is positive for any point over here. Tangent is the ratio of these two numbers, so a negative divided by a positive is a negative. Now back to solving the problem, I'm going to use the identity sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. Here, I can substitute 7 over 25 in place of cosine, and then I can use this identity to solve for sine. So again, this squared here means you're actually squaring the cosine function. So I'll leave the sine squared theta part alone, but in place of cosine squared theta, I'm going to put 7 over 25, and that quantity is being squared. And this is equal to 1. So sine squared of theta... Okay, if I square that fraction, that's going to be 49 divided by, okay, 25 squared. Is that 
what is that, 625? It is 625. That's equal to 1. I'm going to subtract 49 over 625 from both sides of my equation. And when I do that, I get that sine squared of theta is equal to, okay, well, it's 1 minus 49 over 625. Um, but that's really, you know, 625 over 625 minus 49 over 625. And if I subtract those two fractions, sine squared of theta is equal to, okay, so 625 minus 49 is 576 over 625. I have a squared here, and I want to know sine, not sine squared. I can now take the square root of both sides like this. I'll continue my work over here. This tells me that sine of theta is equal to the square root of 576 over 625. Technically, plus or minus, but actually only one of those makes sense. Because the angle theta is in the fourth quadrant and sine is negative there, we don't want the positive solution. We want to take the negative solution. So I'll erase the positive one, and I'll only keep the negative one. Furthermore, I think we can uh, simplify this a little bit. We can take the square root of the numerator and the denominator separately. So let's see, sine of theta is equal to, okay, so that's negative, the square root of uh, 576 over, okay, the square root of 625, we already know what that's equal to, that's equal to 25. Okay, so sine of theta is equal to, it's negative, the denominator is 25, and what is the square root of 576? Well, oh, it's 24. I can't reduce that anymore, but we found one of the five other trig functions. Sine of theta is equal to this, negative 24 over 25. So we were given cosine, we just found sine, we need to know tangent as well as the three reciprocals. And let's do those on the next slide. So here's what we know. We don't know tangent of theta. We also don't know the reciprocal of sine, which is cosecant of theta. We don't know that. Uh, the reciprocal of cosine is secant. We don't know that as well. And then we need to know the reciprocal of tangent, which is cotangent. So we don't know these four. Uh, these two are actually pretty quick to figure out if you know these two. Um, these are the reciprocals. That means you can just flip the two fractions. So cosecant of theta is negative 25 over 24. Likewise, secant is 25 over 7. Once I find tangent, I'll just flip the fraction and write it as cotangent. Now tangent is defined as the ratio of sine to cosine. And we already know sine, it's negative 24 over 25. And cosine is 7 over 25. Here we're dividing two fractions. That means you can multiply by the reciprocal of the one in the denominator like this. And this is nice because the 25s cancel and we are left with negative 24 over 7. So that is the value of tangent, negative 24 over 7. And therefore, the value of cotangent would be negative 7 over 24. And that is it for this problem.